What is happening everybody? Steve here. I hope you're doing well. Today I'm going to talk about buyers waking up, but I'm going to preface it in two different ways because I think it's important to really understand what's going on, what's going on in the markets today. So the first aspect are people, uh, buyers that actually made a purchase on a home. And we're going to jump into an article real quick. Uh, Clever Real Estate did a, um, a survey and this is through uh, CNBC that put it out there, but basically said 72% of buyers are having regrets about their home purchases. The number one reason for buyer's remorse is 30% of respondents said they spent too much money. Now, I've been saying this as a local real estate broker here in Southwest Florida. I've been saying, you know, buyers need to watch out. There's a lot of FOMO in the market. We talked about this tons of times in previous videos especially when the market was still going insane i was pushing this narrative that people are going to get hurt and people are going to feel the pain because they were going and buying real estate emotionally and unfortunately all they're they're starting to see the repercussions of their decisions uh, the second most common regret was rushing the home buying process with 30 percent saying they per uh, their purchase decision was rushed and 26% indicating they bought too quickly. And then it says 31% of buyers said they paid over asking price, and check this out, the median amount paid over listing price was $65,000. I mean, when I was watching this and watching people actually come to the table paying over asking price, not only were they paying over asking price, people were actually coming out of pocket and paying over uh, appraisal value. So basically when people are getting a loan, they have to get an appraisal. If not, the lender is not going to give them funding. And if the appraisal is off, sellers are like, that's my number, take it or leave it because I got a uh, cash buyer in the wings waiting. And buyers were literally coming out of pocket to offset the appraisal on top of their down payment that they already put down. Astonishing. Now, what happens when you're in this position? So a lot of people, they were also buying with no inspection. Some people were buying uh, sight unseen, meaning they were never looking at the property. They never visited the property. Some people, heck, have never even visited the area that they are buying into. So there was this just big big emotional rush for buyers coming into different markets buying real estate that they necessarily shouldn't have bought and they were just put out there because mainstream media and everybody else is saying you guys got to get into this hot market mortgage rates are low jump into it if you don't you're going to miss out and now we're starting to see people unfortunately really understand the cost of ownership they're understanding that um, especially for first time home buyers, they're understanding that like prime example. So if you guys have been following me for a bit, you know, I sold my primary residence and now we're in a rental here in Pelican Bay. And, uh, by the way, for all you guys that are commenting saying, why don't you show the ocean view here? Um, it's, it's all about the lighting. If I turn it this way, I'm not going to get the light. So you can get a peek of it back there. Um, but basically, so we move into this place and we, the, the, the owners haven't been here for probably at least a year and we come in and there's probably about, I'd say, you know, close to six, $700 worth of issues. And we had a call and a handyman handle those issues. Now that doesn't seem like a lot and, and it really isn't, but somebody that depleted their bank account to get into a home and they get nailed with a $700 bill to fix something is a lot of money. Not to mention if people are not prepared for deferred maintenance like an HVAC going out, a roof leak or other unforeseen issues with a home, they're on the hook for it. And unfortunately, a lot of buyers were tenants. They, they were always renting their entire lives and if they had a leaky faucet, they're calling their landlord or their management company and saying, hey, I got a leaky faucet, come out and, and get this. So we're starting to see pain. And what I foresee, and you guys can mark my words, as our market, as our real estate markets begin to plummet, we're just at the beginning stages of this, guys. 
as our markets start to plummet and properties that I'm gonna bring you guys through, what I foresee happening is we're gonna see properties that from the outside look really nice and everything else, but we're gonna see properties that have deferred maintenance. And these are gonna be properties that had um, you know, leaks where it was leaking under the, uh, under the sink, in the bathroom, kitchens. We're gonna see basically those leaks, if they're not, if you know anything about real estate, if you don't hand, take care of a leak, that's going to cause major, major issues in the future. It's gonna cause rotting, it's gonna cause mold and everything else. So I anticipate we're gonna see these properties where there's gonna be small leaks that equate to bigger projects for us as we come in and begin to buy these properties. And uh, unfortunately, people, uh, they don't have necessarily the handyman experience to handle this kind of stuff. People have run dry, they, they are basically just, they don't have the money to hire a plumber. And ultimately people are going to, I said this in a, a couple of our videos and I got some pushback from some people on the channel. And I said, people are going, there's gonna be a certain segment of people that are going to despise real estate. And I saw this in the last crash when we were helping people avoid foreclosure by doing short sales. And I saw, I saw and heard the pain in people's voices and everything else. And they're like, why did I buy this property? I hate this property. And quote unquote, and I heard it dozens and dozens of times, I will never buy a property again. So um, unfortunately, I, I think that uh, we're gonna see the, the inflicted pain for people that bought. Now, I'm gonna also talk about people who have not bought as well but before I do that, let's jump into a Fortune article real quick. Um, now, if you look at this, it says in July, 63. Uh, sorry, in July, 63,000 home buyers backed out of their purchase agreements at 16.1% of the pending home sales. That's the highest share since March and April 2020, when deals fell 17.5% and 16.3% respectively, according to a new report from Redfin. Now, we can look at this chart here. It's an interactive chart. I'll put it in the description for you guys, as always. But this is basically when the pandemic started. You know, when the pandemic started, it was like people were freaking out. They're like, you know, the world is ending. I do not want to take on a huge mortgage and buy right now. So we saw a huge uptick right here, March, April, 2020 with the amount of people that were uh, backing out. And as you can see, you know, everything was fine over a couple of years. And then as of um, July right here, we're looking at 16.1%. I believe August is gonna show probably even higher for people backing out. And um, unfortunately, this is, just, this is just bad news. And look, a lot of these buyers Yes, some of them just were not able to get uh, approved, but I guarantee that a big, and I hate to guarantee anything, but I think a big segment of uh, buyer backout is related to uh, people actually seeing mainstream media talk about, hey, you know what, this, this housing market's a little sketchy, so you might want to uh, reconsider things possibly. And the, these are the same yahoos that I was talking about, these same housing cheerleaders that were pushing and pushing and pushing for people to go out and buy real estate because a lot of these companies have self, uh, they have invested interest in keeping a housing market keep going because ultimately they make more money. And these are prominent people that I spoke about in other videos, other CEOs of major real estate um, companies, large, large fran franchisors, as well as mainstream media. So it, it's just sad, the narrative that was pushed. Now, um, I made some notes here and I'll, I'll quickly go through it. The masses know, I think buyers understand, and look, if this is not happening in your market right now, um, it's happening in a lot of markets, but I believe the masses see it, the masses know, I'm seeing it. Thank you for all, all you guys to commenting down in terms of what's going on in your market because it helps not just me, but it helps other people read those comments and see, wow, you know, in you know Raleigh, North Carolina, we're seeing X amount of uh, people backing out. And I, you know what I really like too is people are like, look, this is, this is where my budget is 
and this is what I'm looking for. And you know, five months ago, I had an option of like 20 properties. Now I have an option of 120 properties. That kind of stuff is very, very significant. So thank you for these stories because it does help. Um, people see new inventory coming to market. They're, they're not dumb when it comes down to it. And I think that a lot of people that were on the sidelines and they were like, look, looking at the inventory, some people were getting close to possibly putting an offer out. They're like, you know, what? I, I think more is coming. I'm, I'm just going to step back for a little bit and see what happens in the market. Um, we haven't even seen the beginning of the, the foreclosures come to market. I mean, right now in our local market here in Southwest Florida, I think we have like 13 foreclosures. I checked in Lee County and I'll do another video on this for the, uh, <clears throat> the calendar for the, the uh, live auction for Lee County uh, court system doing the uh, foreclosure auctions. And it's, it's averaging like 25 uh, properties a month, which is nothing right now. This is nothing. And these are, it's a, it's <clears throat> what we call maybe shadow inventory or inventory that's on the, the back burner, but this inventory is going to come to market. We have a lot of stressed landlords as well. There's over 6 million people not paying their rents right now, guys. So you have not just institutional investors buying these and they have um, professional management and know what to do with these uh, tenants um, that are non paying, but you have a lot of mom and pop landlords that, you know, they had this for retirement. They're sick and tired of tenants. They're sick and tired of government intrusion saying that people now don't have to pay the rent to you. And uh, guess what, Mr. Landlord, you're on the hook for all your bills still and that tenant doesn't have to pay. People are sick and tired of that. So landlords who, you know, they're, you have aging landlords as well that wanna get out. So we have over 6 million people not paying their rent. Think about what that's gonna to do to the market. And all the people out there that are saying, oh well, institutional investors are just gonna buy these up. Guys, they are unloading inventory. They are. There's some companies out there that are still buying inventory. There's some companies that have it part of their business model where they're pulling back like Blackstone, they're pulling back invitation homes. We've worked with them. They're pulling back and they're gonna just sit on the sidelines. They're gonna wait for this market to correct and then they're gonna get back into buying. Yes, that will happen. Other companies I think are, they don't know what they're doing. I think that there's other institutional investors that got ahead of themselves the cost of financing is getting much more expensive and they don't want to be on the hook for a defaulting tenant. They don't want to be on the hook for lower rent rates, which I've said in the past and nobody's talking about it. I think rent rates will come down in a lot of areas that exploded with rent rates. Um, and um, they, they don't want to be on the hook for lower property valuation. So institutional investors that got in at good prices are more inclined to go ahead and sell those pro uh, properties at a profit right now. And the ones that are getting ahead of the curve right now are doing better. Lastly, I wanna say something about that too in terms of sellers. I've spoken to multiple sellers over the last pat, uh, you know, couple weeks and uh, talking about the market and everything else and it's stagnant. The market's pretty stagnant in Southwest Florida here and I'm like, look, you got to do some direct, there's, there's only so many things that you can do in order to sell your property in a flat market right now or a declining market. One of the main things that you can do is reduce price and you have to show significant reductions many times too. So if you just drop price to be in line with the competition, you're probably going to hurt yourself. I would drop significantly below the um, even uh, recent sold comps and definitely significantly below your competition. So keep that in mind. Um, anyway, as always, I appreciate you guys being here. Thank you so much. You guys mean the world to me. And uh, I'll see you guys on the next video. See you.